Hello everyone and welcome to Dusk Time in FSX land. Uh, you know the deal here, so I'm just going to open up the doors. Why didn't that work? Um, that's why. Right, okay. Um, so yes, I will get this show on the road and then we'll talk about what we're doing. So, um, checklist, let's go. Park and brake is in. Fire handles are in. Fuel, standby fuel pumps, normal. Other fuel pumps are off. That's fine. Avionics master switch is off. That's fine. The icers, off. Um, where's the other one? Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, that's off. That's fine. Cabin lights. Let's get the no smoking sign on. Passengers are loading, so beacon light on. Peter. Oh, we've covered that one. Uh, generator switches are off. That's fine. Flap handles full up position. No, don't do this to me now. My knee board stopped working. Right, okay. Fuel levers are off. Uh, we're going to start the engine, so we'll put these to full forward now. Power levers to flight idle. I've got them on full idle, so up to flight idle. They do that kind of funky wobble thing that, <laughs> that I get. Uh, windshield wipers are off. Landing lights are off. Ignition switch is normal. Uh, we're now going to so, like, so take the parking brake off. Uh, right, master battery switch now on. So we have voltage, which we do, that's fine. So we've got some caution lights, let's test the rest of them. Which is known as taxi lights, your bell end to this one. So all our caution lights are working, should we need them, that's good. Um, next is the beacon lights, for which we need the avionics switch on. So we'll do one, two, three, and these will be important because we are actually doing ILS stuff today. So yeah. Um, Beta lights, test them individually. They're working, that's fine. Uh, fuel quantity, we have fuel. We're riding at about 68% fuel, I think is what I put in. Uh, I can't remember now, actually. Um, okay, let's do the crossfeed check. So, all pumps on. Is that right? Boost pumps. No, no, sorry. Uh, standby fuel pumps are off. So we should have no lights and then both on forward, two lights, both on aft, two lights the other direction. And if I put it back to normal and then both off, there should be four lights, which is fine. So now we're going to have both on normal and we're going to stand by the aft pump. There should be one light off, which there is. And. One light off on the other side, which there is. I'm putting that on. So, standby pumps now off. Fuel boost pumps to the normal position. Woo! And that's that done. So, the next thing we're going to be doing when we get round to it is the engine start. And we can see it's already starting to get quite dark outside as the sun's just about setting off to the right there. So, let's just uh, check the weather. Echo go, Papa Lima, local latest information. Sierra winds 255 at 30, visibility 7 kilometers, sky clear, temperature 4, dew point 1, UNH 993, landing and departing, runway 24. 24, right, okay, so we've got a note of that, so let's get this shit show set. Altimeter 0993, set and check. Okay, so that's all set in, that's fine, we'll start speaking to ground. Ground, Victor, three, four, seven, ready for clearance, two, Echo, Golf, Papa, Oscar. Victor, three, four, seven, ground, clear, two, Echo, Golf, Papa, Oscar, S file, line two, altitude, three thousand feet, score, three, three, two, three, departure frequency, one, one, nine, decimal, two. Cleared to Echo Golf Papa Oscar as filed. 
climb to altitude 3,000 feet. Squawk 3323. Three, Departure 119er. Decimal 2. Victor 347. Okay. Ground Victor 347 is with you at 24. Request taxi. Victor 347 ground taxi holding point runway 24 QNH 993. Right, uh, S7. Runway 24 QNH 993 Victor 347. Right, okay, so we've Victor been... Victor 3, 4, 7, read back, correct. So we've been cleared up to 3,000. Golf, Alpha, Quebec, Hotel, Uniform, 5, Mile, Final, Runway, 2, 4. Golf, Alpha, Quebec, Hotel, Uniform, Tower, Winds, 2, 5, 5, at 3, 0. Roger, Golf, Alpha, Quebec, Hotel, Uniform. Right, we'll just get set up for takeoff, so... Heading to 4, 0, set and check. Uh, um, okay, so that's the runway that which you landed on, so a lot of the things are still checked, that's fine. So, um, right, we've been given our permission to taxi to runway 24, so we're going to begin the engine start. <laughs> I just realised a fucking annoying problem. Right, uh, okay. So start right engine first. Coming up. Um, because I took the parking brakes off, it says that we've started the flight. So I've actually kind of wasted five minutes already, which is a bit shit. Uh, right, okay. Pressure stabilized, so we'll start bringing this in. Oh yeah, that's correct. We ran out of pilot pro uh, I was wondering what that kind of scraping noise was. Uh, we ran out of hy hydraulic pressure um, last time, so the flaps were still kind of up, which is a bit of a dumb, dumb, dumb on my part. Um, so yes, anyway, we're flying from Benbecular Airport, which if you remember is where we landed last time, and we're flying up to Stornoway. Benbecular offers... Um, three service destinations. There's the Glasgow direct to the south uh, and then there is Inverness by way of Stornoway. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the leg um, all the way to Stornoway. Uh, right, okay, so what do we got, what do we got, what do we got? Let's get the generator, well actually let's get start motor off for a start. Uh, engine generator is on, should have positive load, which we do. Good temperature, temperature, temperature is right at zero, so we'll keep the prop D ice on for the moment. Uh, engines are on now, so altimeter, uh, anti-collision and navigation lights should be on. That's fine, we're just going to get right to taxi in, so we'll get the taxi lights on. I don't think I've forgotten anything else. Oh, yes, one very important thing. What's this? Yeah, right, okay, this should, this should be zero, otherwise I'm gonna fuck up big time when I get into the air. Right, okay, how the hell did I get to runway 24 from here? Uh, via runway 35, right, okay. Let's do this! So this has been a fleeting trip to Ben Becula. There's a British Airways service that's going to go down to Glasgow, presumably. Whereas we are going to go up to Stornoway. So uh, I touched upon it when we were um, getting our clearance. I know the line goes off to the left, but I don't want to get too close to Mr. Polygon here. So, um, yes, Stornoway is, it, it's not a big, big airport, but, um, it is pretty substantial. It's substantial enough that it has ILS, so we will be doing ILS, the interior lights have kicked in. So we're coming up to runway 35, which is not in use today. We've been told that from the Weather Information Service. So we are going to be okay to just pop across. Uh, 
and then we go up to taxiway which does have a cross on it but it's showing as a valid taxiway for FSX. Oh nope 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 that's a fucking fence. <laughs> okay well my map's wrong. So we'll just turn us. Looks like we're gonna have to taxi down the runway. We've gone slightly off the thing. So or ordinarily we'd have to get permission to cross the runway, but I don't think we're gonna need it this time. Mainly because I'm not sure if I can with the radar contact. Sun's about halfway set now. I'm just having a giggle to myself. I just assumed that was uh, that that was going to. Uh, Round speedbird eight eight zero seven request start up. Speedbird eight eight zero seven round start up up road. Yeah, um, I <laughs> I didn't uh, I didn't actually know that was going to Glasgow, but it turns out it is. So uh, we're gonna hang fire here. Uh, that's fine, so auto feather should now go on. We're pretty much uh, we're pretty much at the holding point now, um, waiting for this plane to land so that I can take off. I can't actually take off from this short distance that we've got left, but because it doesn't, the game doesn't understand that I'm at the edge of the airport yet. I can't. Which is a bit of a pain and this thing seems to be taking fucking forever to land. Ugh. We're gonna be late. We'll get the instrument lights off moment taxi lights off while we're waiting. Worst part is we could have made it made it across quite quite fucking easily. <laughs> Sun's almost gone. So's my fucking patience, guys. Ugh, I'll probably fast forward through this, I think. Tell you what, we'll use this opportunity to um, put in the information that we need. So, I have the navigation point that we're going to, which is one. I'm actually going to put it in this one. I'm going to do 115 point... what is it? 1? Yeah, 115.1. So I'll show you at this point, I'll edit into the video, um, the piece of paper that I use. I always have a bit of paper with me for jotting down notes on flights, uh, and I thought last time it would be a good idea to actually show them, 
but uh, I never, I never got really got round to it. So I'll do it for this flight. I'll do it for this flight. One one zero point nine. Uh, right. Okay. So that's the ILS that we'll be going to. So this is going to be the primary source of navigation. Uh, this is the um, the Stornoway waypoint, which is kind of the other side of the runway, uh, and the all directional beacon is four three one. Ground call Alpha Quebec Hotel Uniform at Bravo Six Gold Alpha Quebec. Uniform ground. Taxi to the ramp. Taxi to the ramp. Roger. Call Alpha. Back. Hotel. Uniform. Okay, he's done. So, what we'll do is we will come across. Oh, taxi light. Taxi light back on. So, we'll go over this way, and I could be making a mistake again. But. Um, according to my map, and here's why I say it's making a mistake, because we all know how fucking well that went last time. Um, there is... Is that a helicopter? Is that Vector what it is? Three, four, seven, contact, tower one, one, nine, or decimal two. Uh, okay. Shift one. Tower on one, one, nine, or decimal two, Victor, three, four, seven, Let's see if there's a fucking fence here. Tower Victor 347, ready for departure. Ooh, there is. Runway 24. Victor 347, Roger. However, it does say we can't. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. If it shows as a. Um, uh, taxiway in FSX planning is good enough for me. Okay, so the windsock is fucking having a tantrum. Right, here's runway 24. Might as well go down to the actual part of runway 24. Kind of miss the center line by a mile. <laughs> right. So we've had everything set. We're pretty much just uh, ready to go as soon as the runway is cleared by dude down there I can see from oops a little bit too fast I think uh, I can see by the map that he's almost at the end of uh, the fucking runway so we'll hang fire here and hopefully we'll get permission to go in a minute Victor 347 tower, runway 24, line up and wait. Line up and wait. Okay. So, runway what? 24, Roger, Victor 347. Bring the flaps down a little bit. We're just about to get this show on the road. Uh, we'll get the autopilot window ready. So, we'll just line us up. So winds are very fast, Fly but it's heading, almost a headwind. So, landing lights on, taxi lights off. Let's do this! So, hold at 80% throttle. Kick us to 100% for now. Rotate. That's us. V2. 
this thing does not need long to take off at all. Like, it needs absolutely nothing. So, with the sun setting, let's wind us back to 80% throttle. Don't want to stay on N1 for too long. Getting quite high, so let's get uh, autopilot, altitude, and heading hold. Positive rate of climb, and we are at just shy of a thousand feet. So we'll bring the flaps back down. given our instructions. So let's begin this flight in earnest. Um, okay, let's... Oh, my passengers are getting shaken. So flaps are up. We're going to get the auto feather off, seeing as the engines didn't hark it, which is a good thing. And then that's us until descent, which is 28 minutes away, uh, according to my little thing off to my left, which you people can't see. So I'm just going to kind of bring this down a little bit more. I'm not in any overly over rushed climb, but I am kind of a little worried about airspeed. I didn't put the taxi light off, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Okay, right. So now that we're up in the air, let's get the instrument panel on. So we can have a little bit of light. So it's quite windy. The reason I decided to do a flight today uh, was that actually where I am just now, so it was a nice day. It was nice and warm and it wasn't overly windy, but um, yeah. It's, uh, the weather seems to be closing in up the north of Scotland, that is certainly for sure. So this is good, navigation doesn't quite have anything. I'm just, I kind of want to zoom in a little bit on my radio panel here and see what... Um, that's not the one that wants to collect the ball. Okay, so that's that. I'm kind of wondering how to switch between Nav 1 and Nav 2 in this. Uh, so this, this is... Pilot wants an altimeter check, so leave the frequency for weather. Broken four 
Once we get above transition, it won't overly matter anyway. What is the, let's just have a look. You won't be able to see what I'm doing here because um, it counts as a different screen. So let's just do difficulty setup, I think it is. Transpond, uh, no, um, uh, transition, there we go. Uh, so it's 1013 is transition, I could remember that. One zero one two actually. <laughs> so the time is seven PM. We're expected to be on the ground a little after half past. So yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the last little sights of Ben Bacula that you'll get to see for a little while. Uh, let's see what the passenger can spot out his little window. The coast of Ben Bacula. I heading zero two five. Altimeter. Oops. Heading zero two five. Set and check. Heading zero two five. Victor three four seven. And now he can't see jack shit. <laughs> Right, okay, so, yeah. Um, Victor, three, four, seven, resume all navigation. Resume all navigation, okay. Resume navigation, Victor, three, four, seven. In that case, I want to try something. Control shift A. Okay. Got it. Okay, so, um, even though I've had uh, radar contact on for a few videos now, I've not really been able to show it, but um, now I have because I finally remembered to change the key beforehand. Um, so the pilot is now in control. No, I'm the pilot. The co pilot is now in control of the plane. So he will make any changes and he will also handle the radios, which is pretty cool. Um, So I don't. They want us to go this way. So with now that he's in charge, uh, I think I will just see what they want us to do. So we're still climbing at the moment. We have picked up quite a fair bit of airspeed, which is good. So I might just pick us up a little bit more. Ah, uh, I was gonna say I would just sit back, quiet, and uh, let you enjoy the nice scenery, but uh, we're in a cloud, so <laughs> can't exactly see. Leaving flight level six zero four, flight level nine zero with Tango. Victor three four seven approach. Expect vectors to the runway one eight. Uh, okay. Runway one eight, Victor three four seven. So copilot three four seven Q and H nine nine one. That's fine. Niner, Niner, 1, Victor, 3, 4, 7. Victor, 3, 4, Ah, whoops. Uh, okay. Maintain, flight level, 7, 0, Victor, 3, 4, 7. 
So what's happened here is I've done a dumb thing. Uh, I forgot to put the P-Tot heat on, so uh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, it frozen over, but uh, now it's back. Okay, so 7-0, and you're hopefully going to hold plane at that, co-pilot. I was trying to look on radar contact, just quickly see what my key was for comms to, yeah, okay, right, so it's, it's K, right, yeah, fine. Right, so we're expecting vectors for runway 18 approach, so, um, So we'll get set up for that. That's kind of annoying because it means what's going to happen is... Uh, hang on. Right, let's, let's do this. Oh no. Oh, okay, apparently the pilot's controlling that. Oh no, okay, so has he got it set up for runway? Am I being special? One. Yeah, he is, right, okay, so he's set up the navigation for runway. Hey, so actually the co-pilot's smarter than I realised for this, which is actually pretty damn cool. Um, so, the uh, co-pilot's in control at the moment. We're holding at uh, 7,000 feet. Um, what altimeter are we at? We're above transition, so we should be... Yeah, okay, so we are at, uh, we are at transition altitude, which is... We're, uh, transition pressure which is fine for the moment oh wow I can see there's oh no ah there's a there's a high altitude airway at Stornoway so I thought there was a lot of aircraft going into uh, <laughs> Stornoway airport but no they're uh, they're flying overhead which is fine so yeah unfortunately we don't have a great deal of so oh, yeah we do now we're out of the cloud we're out of the cloud <laughs> And uh, we've passed over the little sound, so this is our first look at Stornoway Island. Um, I'm a little bit fast, but I think I have some fuel to bleed off. You just hear the engines go a little bit silent there. I'm going to switch recording method for a little bit of a minute, and we're going to have a look at uh, information, the in-flight Okay, so the remaining fuel allows for one and a half hours of flight and we've only got nine minutes until we get to our destination. Obviously it's going to be more than that because we need to circle round and back um, because of the fact that we're coming from heading basically 250 I think we are, something like that, box. Yeah, just about, 24, 240 we're coming from. Uh, and we're landing at runway 18, which is effectively behind us. So, um, yeah. So we'll have to go do that. So this method of recording is slightly inefficient. So I'm just going to go back to... Shit, that was the wrong one. Here we go. This one. I already get enough CPU spiking as it is. I don't particularly need. Um, I don't particularly need any more CPU hogging. So now with the sunset, we start seeing a little bit of the stars coming out to play. That reminds me, I need to record some Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so we're back in and we've unloaded all of the textures, so that we take them a little bit of time back in. So if I were me at the moment, I would be vectoring me north, probably heading to five zero. Um that I can intersect the ILS to a decent degree. 
Ah, okay, so the ILS has caught on, so we have navigation there, which is good. And uh, the direction finder hasn't quite caught up to us yet. Uh, so we're rocking around quite a lot because of turbulence. It's quite good that we've got the ILS for this approach because you can see there's quite a lot of, uh, pardon me, uh, there's a lot of low lying cloud. Uh, how long? We've got 26 minutes, and uh, yeah, we're going to be some, some time for this. In. Let's get our little autopilot back up. at what point the co-pilot is going to fire off the aircraft back to me. I'll need to wait and see. As far, I, I've not heard any instructions from control about uh, what... Well, any instructions. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're still waiting now. We're in the cloud again. Something off screen, so I didn't notice. Many faces is telling me that I have a memory to look back on. Nothing overly interesting, <laughs> as ever. So, um, I was supposed to be using these videos to kind of chat, because obviously in between landing and takeoff, there's actually quite a lot of interim flying where not a great deal actually happened. However, um, that, that was originally what I wanted to do, was to kind of talk, talk about it in these videos. But actually, I think I might end up not doing that. Uh, I might actually do a kind of monthly vlog, uh, mainly because... Um, we finally decided on what direction we're going to take the video game of mine that is in development and that means I can finally start getting serious and talk about it uh, without the fear of um, getting shut down by the powers that be. So, um, sorry, we're getting close to the ILS facing the wrong direction. Anyway, um, yeah, so... Ah, okay, right, I see, I see. Okay. So, um, yes, I probably won't be doing that with these videos. The other, the other reason why I, um, I probably, it's probably not a good idea to do it in these videos is um, at any moment I could get interrupted by an emergency or what have you. Um, so there's some three, four, seven, descent to altitude three thousand feet. Q and H, liner, liner, one flight heading three six zero degrees. Okay, let's go back. Let's change all that. Two, Okay, so yes he is. So co-pilot's put all that in, so we're going to cut the engines back. So yeah, stuff like that. Uh, things that can happen. Uh, uh, well, just to be sure. Now departure is being 
Right, um, so yes, basically something like that can happen. So, um, what we've... Sorry, I'm just looking at the map. We're going a really funny route, to be honest. It's a little bit odd. Um, yeah, so because anything could happen during these flights, and for people who aren't actually interested in flight simulation, obviously I carry quite a lot of audience uh, that are to do with my emergency services in Scotland series, or my emergency four videos, or my GTA videos, uh, none of which are quite, you know, simulation <laughs> kind of thing. So um, it means that they don't have to sit through an entire video just to get what uh, I get to the part where I talk about what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah, they could skip it, but then, as I say, anything could happen at any point, and I might not be able to get to finish what I'm talking about, which isn't ideal. Um, have... what? I'm confused. Yeah, I was starting to wonder because uh, there's an aircraft that's just taken off from Stornoway. I'm looking in my map here, and he's taken off. In fact, I might, if I uh, switch over to monitor capture, you can see what we've got here. We've basically got this aircraft, British Airways 8776. He's taken off from Stornoway, runway... 36 and then he circled back so that's interesting uh, yeah that's just that's what I was looking at while I was uh, over there so let's go back to window capture mode so we can actually just about see the British Airways flight to be honest if I don't know uh, okay. so this is British Airways flight just passing He's just climbing above us now, and we can see Stornoway, which is down there. Altimeter zero nine one seven check. Altimeter is fine. Uh, right. Okay. So, um, yes. So here is Stornoway Airport. So we can see it's it's quite a legit looking airport. So we're going to fly off to the north a little bit and then we're going to turn around and land. At the moment the co-pilot is still in control of this aircraft so that's fine. How are we doing anyway? We're descending, we're still at 3,400 feet so we're still descending towards our assigned altitude. Um, and we've made up a good bit of time actually by uh, by going on slightly faster than cruise power. We've burned a lot of fuel, but um, I think we'll probably get our monies back from it. I would rather uh, I would rather have myself um, have less profit from this flight than be fined for being late. So you can just see the sun over to the west. Just see the halo around it, even though the sun's well set now. Okay, so they've been handed off, which is good. So, um, right, let's try and... I can see it on the map, but, um, it's a wee bit harder to spot on the ground. So basically what's going to happen is this little nuke here that we're looking at is kind of where the um, outer ILS point is. So we're probably going to get to about here on the ground 
and then circle back into the airport, I reckon. If it tries to take us much further than that, then that's going past the completely past the island of Stornoway, uh, which we don't really want. One thing we haven't talked about that um, is actually quite important is uh, emergency airports. So on the way uh, from Benbecula to Stornoway, which is the route that we are doing, um, there is no option for an alternate airport. Uh, we would either have to continue to Stornoway or circle back to Benbecula. There is no uh, airports in the intermediate. So that's something that we've considered because uh, on my bit of paper, which I will flash on screen to remind you of, but no, um, you can see we've got the um, the navigation information for Bedbecula as well as um, Stornoway, just in case we did need to circle around and fly back. So yes, we have been prepared for that. Plan shit, y'all. Uh, it's uh, it's twenty past seven at the moment, so I think I'm going to be having dinner when this flight is over. Right, okay. I'm going to pick us back up a little bit, as you can see in the what half past ten position is that little nuke which marks the end of the ILS point so this is kind of should be another couple of minutes uh, and I expect that we're going to start getting vectored back to the airport So they're giving us quite a lot of distance for a uh, base leg by the looks of things. Is that? There must be a plane or something ahead that the texture was just marked on. Alright, so here's this distinctive little nuke. Now let's see what happens. Speed speeds fine holding at one five zero knots. So ground speed of one six seven. Yeah, it looks like we've had a tailwind some of the way over here, so that's helped us. It's helped us quite a lot actually. Victor three four seven twenty eighty three six zero degrees. Six zero. Yeah, right. Yeah. Six zero degree. Yeah. Three four seven. That does make sense. <laughs> okay, so co-pilot's going to turn us to our side thing. We've got a bit of a little cloud coming in ahead, literally. You know, wall coming out there. How's that light over there? It's kind of spooky. It doesn't look like a star. It's like it's too old to be a star, but it could very well be. So, nukes now at our 9 o'clock. So, any time now I'm expecting vectors to the runway. At the moment, if we were to turn and land directly at the airport, it would take us 5 minutes and we have 13 minutes left. So, we're kind of starting to get a little bit pushed for time up to six minutes now versus 12 so yeah I'll hold on another minute or so to see if we actually get turned over but if not then we will need Victor 3, 4, 7, 5, 8, 2, 7, 5. right okay yeah so th this is us now this is us now getting turned on to base leg which is fine so I'm going to start getting Yes, ready for descent, so I'm going to get our instrument panel off and I'm going to bring on the 
autopilot. So a good little look at the sea here. <laughs> So uh, I put the light off, you'll probably have seen it yourself if you're... Sorry, I had a little bit of an AFK moment there. So yes, um, as I was saying, you'll probably have seen it on aircraft when you've been flying yourself and they put off the cabin lights when they are uh, getting ready to land. It's really just to give uh, pilots a little bit more visibility of their, uh, their instruments and uh, the relevant lights of the airport. It's kind of important because like if you end up like in a cloud or something, the lights from the cabin reflect off the cloud and can kind of blind the pilot. So it's um yeah, it's usually a good idea to just uh have them switched off. So that's what we've done. Uh we're <laughs> I think we're gonna be just on time. Just in the nick of time because uh it's what well, the airport's eight minutes to our left and we've got eleven minutes to get there, so eh. Eh. <laughs> I'm just curious to see at what point the co pilot's gonna hand the control back to me. See if there's any relevant point to note when uh, we should be matching on the ILS. Not really. So we'll just have to keep watching the instrumentation. Tell you what, rather than waiting, I'm going to take control. Okay. So I have control of the plane. Co pilot still has control of communications, however. So landing lights are on, no warning lights. Are on engines seem fine and dandy. Pressures are good. Fuel is good. Turbulence is not good. Wow! As soon as we get over the island, that's just really shaft. That's good. <laughs> Expecting vectors on to finals within the next one or two minutes. I would hope. Let's see if we get them. You see the airport off to our left. It's in about the 10 o'clock position. That's good, I'm scared you this. Let me land. <laughs> I don't want to be late. It's thrown around by quite a lot of turbulence here. Something keeps flashing off in the distance. I can't tell if that's supposed to be distant thunder or just uh, the game's graphics have a little bark to themselves. Victor <sighs> 3 or 7 6 miles from the marker, flight heading 210 degrees. Heading 210 degrees. Heading 210 degrees. Heading 210 degrees. Flight heading to one zero degrees, maintain two thousand five hundred feet, clear ILS, runway one eight, approach fixed three four seven. 
So we've began the turn in and I'm going to put us on approach until we are on the ILS. 2500. Yes, yes, that's because we're descending to 2500. Okay. Approach lock has now con got control of the heading. You know something guys, I can't remember the last time I had uh, uh, um, a flight where um, I had the seatbelts off at any point. <laughs> it's becoming a bit of a pain in the earth. Well, for the flyers anyway, I'm not all that bothered. I'm in a chair that doesn't have a seatbelt anyway. <laughs> ah, the joys of armchair flying. Good news, this turbulence seems to have died down just a teensy little bit. Oh no, oh no. Okay. I think we just got a, yeah, we've got a tiny glimpse of the Pappy lights. You know what? Seen it as I'm just gonna quickly dim the lights. One second. That's the real world lights, by the way, not the uh, <laughs> not anything in the uh, cockpit. My uh, my main room lights just a little bit too bright. Okay, so we're just about going to meet localizer. Okay, approach now has control of. The altitude as well as the heading, so it's going to take us in. Uh, you. There's uh, unfortunately um, there are. Uh, th this is the main runway of Starnaway that we're landing at, um, but. Even though there are other ones that we're not currently using, it basically means that we have a. Uh, let's just check the weather quickly. Yeah, we have a 40 knot crosswind. Contact tower 123 decimal 5. Tower ball 123 decimal 5. Okay. Tower Victor 3475 mile final runway 18. So we're bringing the airspeed in. Victor 347 tower, runway 18, winds 275 at 18. Oh, okay, apparently the winds. 347. The winds at the airport are apparently a lot easier to deal with, so that's fine. Because, uh, the winds are showing 32 knots where I am. We're at 100 knots, stage 1 flaps. Uh, it's a long runway here, so we're, our, we're only going to go with stage 3 flaps. We're now to stage 2. Stage 3, we're going to go back. 4, 7, runway 1, 8, clear to land. Clear to So hold the crosswind like this. Uh, the ILS is going to have to bring us down because we have four white lights, which is bad. Okay, I imagine it's going to ease the throttle back. So Descent a little bit. <laughs> I 
the look at the angle. I'm having a look over the the kind of 11 o'clock position just to kind of get a straight landing. Normally I have the thing like this so I can see my engine instruments as I'm landing. But holy hell, I think this is probably going to be the strongest crosswind landing I have made. <laughs> 1,000. Okay, 1,000 feet. very very high at the moment so okay we're starting to come back on the glide slope which is fine bring us back up to about 50 percent throttle the winds are starting to die down as we get close to the ground which is good however we're very very far away we're well left of the localizer so uh, well to the right sorry 500 Plenty of runway to play with, so not overly worried about being slightly too high. Oh, I am. Now. Okay, I'm taking full control of the aircraft now, so I'm just gonna wind the engines back a little bit more to increase our descent. We're gonna land. Okay, there we go. So we're a little bit better. We're gonna guide ourselves along to hit the runway center line. Um, One hundred. Okay. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Clear. Gear touchdown. Okay, that was pretty damn good. Actually, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, we've got a runway coming up ahead, so I'm just going to quickly nip off the other screen to get a map of the airport up. Victor three four seven. Turn off at the next high speed and hold. Contact ground one two three decimal five. When runway is clear. Thank you for your assistance. Yes. Hold one two three decimal five. Uh, okay. Speedbird 8779 is with you at 3,900 feet with Tango. Speedbird 8779, approach. Expect vectors to the runway 36. Runway 36, Speedbird 8779. So we're going to turn Speedbird off. Speedbird 8779, contact tower 123 decimal 5. Tower 123 decimal 5, Speedbird 8779. Victor 3, 4, 7 at Bravo 7 Victor 3, 4, 7 ground Taxi 2, the ramp Taxi 2, the ramp, roger Victor 3, 4, 7 Okay, uh, taxi to the ramp Who's got somewhere spare? Uh, I think the terminal does actually Which could be useful for us Okay, so we've landed So flaps are up Landing lights are off, taxi lights are back on. Let's get ourselves some flight critique. Standing by for a long time. Excellent, real good job. You're gonna put Fizdo out of business. You keep this up. Congratulations. See you next flight. Yay! I did good. Right, okay, and here we are, we're at Sturnaway Terminal. Um, let me just have a little... Let's use cheap mode, I just kind of want to see if there's actually any parking up next to the terminal, or if we need to go a little bit away from it. Uh, I'll hold here. I'll find out quickly. What do we got?
Yes, we do. Right, okay. There are there is some space, so let's go. So let's go off to the left here, Stormway Airport Fire Services. Uh, and we're going for the last bay on the right hand side. Storing away airport. Yeah. It's even got air stairs. This is a proper airport and everything. Christ. Uh, okay, so there is a large parking bay, not this one. This one? Down here, let me just begin a turn. I don't think it's. Uh, oh yes, it does. Ha it does have a line. Okay, that's fine. So it's, it's here. So it's, it's basically facing this little gate into the airport, and that's us. Make sure that we're actually still on. We're actually off the taxiway proper. Uh, okay, we're still on the access road, so I'm gonna nip forward just a little bit more. There we go, perfect, right. So, park and brake on, and in the end, we were just four minutes late, which is not bad at all. So, uh, let's get the passengers with their seatbelt sign off, taxi light off, Pete heap off, and property ice off, um, generators off, and let's kill the engines. Engine one off, engine two off. So we'll let the passengers gather their belongings. Uh, strobe light can be off, navigation off, we'll keep the rotating beacon off. On while we still got well while the engines are still spinning wildly, <laughs> uh, so we'll just wait. Propel our RPMs coming down. As soon as it hits zero, the props lock into place, and then we can open the door. So there we go. Prop lock right. Prop lock left. So let's open the door and end this flight. So let's whack off this rotating beacon and what else? I said we'll keep the lights on, the cabin lights on just for the moment, just while they're disembarking. Wouldn't want to get a lawsuit mm -hmm. for anyone who hurts themselves. So uh, what we're going to do for the final time today, we're going to change the method upon which we do our recording. And FS passengers end flight. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, da, 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 da. So, 50 minute flight effectively. Uh, 16 passengers, that's fine. Um, fuel use was kind of high, but uh, touchdown speed was nice, that's good. Uh, was relieved, relieved to have landed with extreme weather, so am I. I didn't get fined for anything, so this was a perfect flight. So yeah, record this flight. Ooh. Yay! I don't need a promotion! <laughs> so, uh, oh, we're still on this screen. Uh, right, okay, so with them off board, we will avionics master off and battery lights off. So we can leave the plane. Uh, best lock the door. That's the end of this flight. So thank you for joining me with this flight with Hibbojabob Airways. Uh, welcome to Stornoway Airport. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you'll see me next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.